feel good in my soul. How many of you? You feel good in your soul? If you feel good in your soul, let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. I love the Lord because he first loved me. I'm going to speak what the Lord has me to give to the church. And anoint everyone in here with oil. Uh, those of you that have your word, turn with me to the book of First Peter, chapter 4. Verse 12 and 13, and I would like to acknowledge, thank God for Pastor Jamal Newton. God bless you. And I acknowledge my beautiful wife of 32 years of evangelist, Geraldine Gallagher. When you have a say, man. The Bible says, my loving, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. He said, but rejoice in as much as you are, partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Amen. The New Testament emphasizes that trouble and affliction are the inevitable experience of faithful believers in an ungodly world, controlled by Satan and opposed to the gospel. Those who are committed to Jesus Christ with a devotion and loyal faith, who walk after the Spirit and who love the truth of the gospel will experience trouble and sorrow. In fact, suffering for righteous sake, it is evidence of the genuineness of our devotion to Christ. Have you ever been there to the point of seeing like the more that you pray and the more that you fast, the enemy was just on your track. The more that you have put out and learned the word of God and said, Lord, I need you to speak to me now. And it seemed like you couldn't hear from God. Oh, God put us sometime in a strange place. Uh, but that don't mean that's not the right place. Amen. Uh, some places that God put us in is testing our faith. Uh, will you still give me praise while you're in this place? Uh, Often times we don't give God what he deserves until we are blessed. Uh, we must see the evidence of his blessing before we can just shout hallelujah and thank you Jesus. Uh, but God wants us to get into a place like David. When it said I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, the enemy main objection is to stop you from praising God. Uh, because pride is put the final seal of your deliverance. Uh, you can call and pray all night long. Uh, praying is communication. Uh, but praising is thinking that. Uh, praise goes to touch the very angels in heaven. Uh, because what you're doing is when you're praising them, you're thanking them in advance. Amen. 
You say, Lord, I just glorify you. I thank you. You may don't see it. Oh, but he's on his way. That's why the Bible declared that he do not have it singing. He don't inhabit preaching. But he inhabit the praises of his people. Oh, sometimes look at somebody and say, praise got me here. Uh, sometime in the journey of life, you're going to realize that you're going to have to have a great praise. A praise is similar uh, to a cheer. Uh, when no one else is around to cheer you on. Nobody else around to pat you on the back and tell, tell you that you're doing well, you're doing good. Oh, the Bible says that you have to encourage yourself. Oh, David said, I delight myself in the Lord. Oh, meaning that no matter what no one else say about me, oh, I have enough. Um, faith in God, I have enough of strength to know that long as I'm in God, everything's going to be all right. Uh, the Bible says now in the book of 1 Samuel 12 and 16, it said, now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Oh, uh, we have to see what God is going to do. Oh, uh, but a lot of times the problem of the church is we don't want to wait. Oh, uh, that's why the Bible scripture says, stand and see. Oh, uh, waiting come to be a point of time in ministry that everything got to be instantaneous. Oh, uh, when is my blessing going to come? How is my blessing going to come? And why me, Lord? These are the things that the flesh cries out day and night. Yes. Oh, the flesh don't want to go through suffering process. Oh, but the Bible says that I suffered in the flesh, the words of Jesus. He said, arm yourself likewise. We're going to go to a point of time of life that you want to realize that you must go through suffering. Uh, suffering is not good, but everybody uh, wants the crown, but nobody want to go to the cross. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, uh, no crown without the cross. You must go through the process of your deliverance. You have to understand, beloved, that you are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of your testimony. If you don't have anything else that you can rely on, Oh, rely on your testimony. You got to saddle up on your faith. And you got to ride on your testimony and say, I know that God made a way for me. I know I've been delivered from this and that. I remember myself on yesterday. Oh, ride your testimony and saddle up on it. Don't let go. Ride it uphill. Ride it going through the valley. Hey. Uh, ride it when it seems like that you get a little weary. Mm -hmm. And the ride make you want to just let go. let go. But say, no, I'm riding no. on my testimony. Hallelujah. Uh, my Hallelujah. testimony Hallelujah. got me where I am today. Yes. You, Knowing that I am what I am by the grace of God. Yes. If it wasn't for God, where yes. would we be? Yes. That's why the Bible says that righteous exalts a nation. Yes. But sin is a reproach to any people. Yes. The word that I want to leave with you on today, and my topic is, 
is look at your neighbor and say you're almost there. You're almost there. Thank you, Lord. You're almost there. Thank you, God. Oh, this is why. Oh, the scripture says that, beloved, think it not strange concerning your fiery trials, which shall try you. And though some strange things happen unto you, but it said, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Uh, I want to deposit this on you today, that you almost did. You're one praise away from your breakthrough. You want to thank you, Jesus, away from your healing. Whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, this is what God will do. The Spirit of God will lift up a standard. So I want to let you know, beloved, that lift up your heads all you can. And be forever lifted up. Ah, uh, the everlasting doors. For the King of Glory is here. Somebody ask, who is? The King of Glory. Oh, Lord. Somebody ask, who is the King of Glory? But the Bible said, it's the Lord that's strong and mighty. It's the Lord that's mighty in battle. Can the church shout yes? Can you say yes? Well, my friend, I just come let you know that you're almost there. Don't give up now. Don't go in the tower now. Because the deliverance you've been through too much. You see people come in and let out. But I come to let you know that you're almost there. That your praise is going to make a difference. That your hallelujah is going to fill the house. That Peter, the Bible says that old Peter, he had a thorn in his flesh. And the Bible says that old Paul, being conflicted by God, have you ever been there? I remember Paul said in his word, he said, What I do would do good. I don't do what I should do. He said, but the evil that I do, I do not want to do. He realized and he said, he said, if this flesh dwelleth no good thing, but Paul, he cried out and said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? You have to make it up in your mind that I'm almost there. I'm not giving up. Paul said, I've been shipwrecked. He said, I've been stoned. He said, I got bit by a viper. He said, I was left to die. They threw me in prison. My loved ones, they say they sold me for 30 pieces of silver. But Paul said, he said, one thing that I talked to the Lord. and said, Lord God, I got a thorn in my flesh. How many of you have been afflicted? And it seemed like you can't come out. But God spoke back to Paul. And the words he said, he said, my grace is sufficient. How many know that you only set up for a blessing? He didn't bring it this far to leave you alone. You may be bit the name. God is about to bring you to a wealthy place. Look at your neighbor. Say you're almost there. You're almost there. The Bible says, he said, my strength 
is made perfect in weakness. In other words, you can declare that by you weak, I am strong. Go! 